Good evening. This is Sleep Chamber, a podcast meant for you to sleep. My voice will hopefully provide a relaxing ambiance for you to drift away into slumber. So please make yourself comfortable and allow my voice to carry you off into the land of dreams. Hopefully. It is what it is. What happens, happens. And as for now, there is nothing we can do. Bert was a vegan mosquito who hated the taste of blood. He would much rather feast on a nice, juicy leaf. Unfortunately for Bert, he was born into a family of mosquitoes, and so he was constantly pestered to go out and find a human to bite. One day, Bert had had enough. He refused to go out and bite someone, and instead stayed home and ate leaves. His family was horrified, but Bert didn't care. As the days went by, Bert started to feel different. He wasn't sure what was happening to him, but he knew that he didn't feel like a mosquito anymore. His wings shrank and his body became thinner until he was barely recognizable as a mosquito at all. The other mosquitoes in his family were disgusted by Bert's new form, but he didn't care. He was still happy eating his greens and that was all that mattered to him. As the months went by, Bert's body continued to change. He grew taller and his arms and legs became longer. His wings disappeared completely and his skin turned a greenish color. He was no longer a mosquito, but he didn't know what he was. One day, Bert met a group of other creatures who were like him. They called themselves vegans, and they told Bert that he was one of them. They explained that there were others like him all over the world. Bert was happy to finally find others like him, and he immediately felt at home with the vegans. Bert was always on the lookout for new and interesting plants to eat, and he was always trying to find new and interesting ways to get his protein. One day, he came across a new plant that he had never seen before. It was a strange-looking plant, and it had a strange smell. Bert was curious about it, so he decided to try it. It turns out that the plant was a vegan mosquito repellent. At first, Bert was disappointed that he couldn't eat it, but he soon realized that this was a good thing. After all, if he could eat it, then so could other mosquitoes. And if other mosquitoes could eat it, that would mean that there would be fewer mosquitoes for him to compete with for food. Bert was happy to have found this new plant, and he decided to make it his mission to spread the word to other mosquitoes about this new food source. He went from plant to plant, telling all the mosquitoes he met about the vegan mosquito repellent. 
and before long, more and more mosquitoes were switching to a vegan diet. One day, Bert had had enough of being different and decided to start a revolution. He gathered all of the other mosquitoes together and spoke to them about his vision of a vegan world where they would all nibble on fruits and vegetables instead of biting people. At first, the other mosquitoes laughed at Bert and called him crazy. But Bert was determined to convince them and he eventually won them over with his passion and dedication. Soon, more and more mosquitoes were becoming vegan and the revolution was in full swing. Mosquitoes all over the world were changing their ways and becoming vegan. Veganism is a way of life that seeks to exclude, as far as is possible and practical, all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose. There are many different reasons why people choose to become vegan. For some, it is an ethical decision based on the belief that all animals have a right to life and freedom and that it is wrong to kill or harm them for human benefit. For others, it is a health decision based on the belief that a vegan diet is the healthiest way to eat. And for others, it is an environmental decision based on the belief that a plant-based diet is the best way to protect our planet. Whatever the reason, more and more people are choosing to live a vegan lifestyle. If you are thinking about becoming vegan, or are already vegan, then you will know that it can sometimes be a challenge to make sure you are getting all the nutrients your body needs. In fact, according to a recent report, the number of vegans in the UK has increased by 360% in the last 10 years. This is because a vegan diet excludes all animal-based foods, including meat, fish, poultry, eggs, dairy and honey. However, it is possible to get all the nutrients you need from a vegan diet. With a little planning and effort, you can make sure you are getting everything your body needs to stay healthy and strong. Here are some tips on how to get all the nutrients you need on a vegan diet. 1. Make sure you are eating a variety of different plant-based foods. This will help you to get all the essential nutrients your body needs. 2. Include plenty of whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds in your diet. These foods are packed with vitamins, minerals, antioxidants and fiber. 3. Eat plenty of beans, lentils and tofu. These foods are good sources of protein, iron and calcium. 4. If you are not getting enough vitamin B12, then you may need to take a supplement. Vitamin B12 is found naturally in animal-based foods, so it can be tricky to get enough on a vegan diet. 5. Make sure you are drinking enough fluids. This is especially important if you are eating a lot of dry, fibrous foods like whole grains, fruits and vegetables. 6. Avoid processed vegan foods. These foods are often high in sugar, salt and unhealthy fats. 7. If you are pregnant or breastfeeding, or are planning to become pregnant, then you should talk to a healthcare professional about your diet. This is because you will need to make sure you are getting enough of certain nutrients, such as iron and folic acid. 8. If you have any health concerns, 
when you should talk to a healthcare professional about your diet. This is because they will be able to give you specific advice on what to eat to stay healthy. Baba has been thinking a lot about veganism lately. He's not quite sure if he could ever give up meat and dairy, but he's intrigued by the idea. He's heard that veganism is healthier and more environmentally friendly, and he's curious to learn more. Baba does some research and finds that there are many reasons to consider veganism. For one, it is better for your health. A plant-based diet has been shown to reduce the risk of heart disease, cancer, and other chronic diseases. It can also help you to lose weight and maintain a healthy weight. Another reason to go vegan is for the environment. The meat and dairy industries are huge contributors to greenhouse gas emissions and deforestation. Going vegan is one of the best things you can do for the planet. Finally, Bubba is drawn to veganism for the animals. He has always loved animals, and the thought of them suffering for our benefit doesn't sit well with him. He knows that by going vegan, he can help reduce the amount of animals that are hurt and killed for food. After giving it some thought, Baba decides to try veganism for a month. He's not sure if he can stick with it long term, but he wants to give it a fair chance. He is surprised at how easy it is to find vegan food options and he enjoys the new flavors and textures he's experiencing. He starts to feel better, both physically and mentally, and he's happy to be helping the animals and the environment. At the end of the month, Baba decides that veganism is the right choice for him. He's not looking back, and he's excited to continue on his journey to better health, a cleaner planet, and a kinder world. Baba was always a bit different from the other kids in his neighborhood. He was always a bit quiet and introspective, and he never really seemed to fit in with the other kids. When he was a teenager, he started to become interested in veganism and Buddhism. He read everything he could about both subjects, and he decided that he wanted to become a Buddhist monk. Baba started to practice meditation and veganism, and he slowly started to distance himself from the material world. He donated all of his possessions to charity, and he started to live a very simple life. He was drawn to the peace and tranquility of Buddhist monasteries, and he decided that he wanted to become a monk. Baba traveled to Asia, and he spent several years living in Buddhist monasteries. He studied the teachings of the Buddha, and he learned how to meditate. He also learned how to live a life of simplicity and compassion. He became a respected monk, and he even helped to teach other monks. Baba eventually returned to the United States, and he started to share his knowledge with others. He started a vegan Buddhist community, and he helped to raise awareness about the importance of compassion and peace. Baba was a man with a dream. He wanted to create a vegan Buddhist community in the USA that would be a haven for those seeking peace and enlightenment. 
And so, with the help of his friends and family, he founded the community of Boulder, Colorado. The community quickly grew, attracting like-minded individuals from all over the country. They came to Boulder to meditate, to practice yoga, and to live in harmony with nature. The community was based on the principles of non-violence, compassion, and respect for all beings. The Boulder community quickly became known as a place of healing and transformation. People came to Boulder to heal their bodies, minds, and spirits. They came to find themselves and to find peace. The community was not without its challenges, however. There were those who disagreed with the vegan lifestyle, and there were those who felt that the community was too strict. But Baba and the others persevered, and the community continued to grow. Today, the Boulder community is thriving. There's a place of acceptance, peace, and love. And it all started with a man named Baba and his dream. No matter who you are, where you come from, or what you've been through, everyone has dreams. Dreams are what keep us going. They're what inspire us to be better and do better. Dreams are what make us unique and special. Without dreams, we would be nothing. Dreams give us hope and a reason to keep going even when things are tough. They remind us of what we're fighting for and why we should never give up. When you have a dream, it's important to dare to go after it. It won't be easy, but it will be worth it. You will face challenges and obstacles, but don't let that stop you. Keep pushing forward and never give up on your dreams. It's not always easy to go after your dreams, but it's always worth it. So dare to dream and dare to go after them. You never know what you might achieve. So be like Bubba. Or like Kim. Kim has always loved dogs, ever since she was a little girl. Her dream is to one day own her own doggy daycare. She has always been a responsible pet owner and has always been quick to help out a friend or neighbor when they need someone to watch their dog. She has even volunteered at her local animal shelter and has a deep love for all animals. Kim's dream is to one day have a large facility where she can take in dogs of all shapes and sizes and provide them with the love and care they deserve. She plans to have a staff of trained professionals who will work around the clock to make sure all of the dogs in her care are happy and healthy. She also plans to have a wide variety of activities and amenities for the dogs so that they can have the best possible experience while they are staying at her daycare. Kim knows that starting her own business will be a lot of work, but she is up for the challenge. She is confident that her dream of owning a doggy daycare will become a reality, and she can't wait to start making all of the dogs in her care happy and healthy. Dogs have been considered man's best friend for centuries. The special bond between humans and dogs is undeniable. 
Dogs offer companionship, loyalty, and love unconditionally. They provide us with protection, security, and service. They are truly man's best friend. The companionship that dogs offer is unique and special. They are always happy to see us and provide us with unconditional love. They offer us comfort and solace when we are feeling down. They are always there for us, no matter what. The loyalty of dogs is unquestioned. They are always loyal to their owners and will do anything to protect them. They will guard our homes and belongings and will even put their own lives at risk to protect us. The service that dogs provide is invaluable. They help us in so many ways, from being seeing eye dogs to working as therapy dogs. They provide us with security and peace of mind. They are truly man's best friend. The bond between humans and dogs is special and unique. Dogs offer us their companionship, loyalty, and love unconditionally. They are always there for us, no matter what. They are truly man's best friend. And cats. Cats have been cherished by people for centuries and their popularity is only increasing. In the United States alone, it is estimated that there are over 86 million pet cats. That's a lot of love for these furry creatures. While some people may think that cats are aloof and uninterested in humans, the truth is that they form strong bonds with their owners. A study in the journal Animal Cognition found that cats recognize their owners' voices and are more responsive to them than to strangers. Cats also have a lot of love to give. They show their affection in different ways, such as purring, headbutting, and licking. And they have a special way of looking at you that communicates their love. So why do people love cats so much? There are many reasons. For one, they make great companions. They're low maintenance, independent, and can be content to just hang out with you. They're also playful and can provide hours of entertainment. Another reason people love cats is that they're very cute. They have expressive faces, and their small size makes them seem vulnerable and in need of protection. Plus, who can resist a cute kitten? But there's more to cats than just being cute and cuddly. They also offer health benefits. Studies have shown that spending time with cats can lower blood pressure, reduce stress, and boost immunity. So if you're looking for a way to relax and improve your health, consider getting a cat. There's no doubt that cats are special creatures. They're loved by millions of people around the world and bring joy, companionship, and even health benefits to our lives. If you're thinking of adding a cat to your family, you're sure to be in for a rewarding experience. There are many differences between cats and dogs, from their appearance to their personality. 
Let's start with their appearance. Dogs are typically much larger than cats, with some breeds growing to be over a hundred pounds. Cats, on the other hand, are typically much smaller, with most breeds only reaching around 20 pounds. Dogs also have much more fur than cats, which not only keeps them warmer in cold weather but also requires more grooming. Cats, on the other hand, have very little fur, which means they don't need to be groomed as often. When it comes to personality, dogs are typically much more outgoing and friendly than cats. They love to meet new people and are always up for a game of fetch or a good belly rub. Cats, on the other hand, are often more independent and aloof. They can be friendly, but they typically prefer to spend their time alone or with other cats. Of course, there are always exceptions to the rule, and there are some dogs who are more independent and some cats who are more outgoing. But in general, these are the differences between cats and dogs. So, which is better? It really depends on what you're looking for in a pet. If you want a loyal friend who will buy your side, a dog is probably the better choice. But if you're looking for a low-maintenance pet who is content to spend most of their time napping, a cat is probably the better option. Camilla the cat and Jenny the dog have been best friends since they were both just little puppies. They loved to play together and cuddle up when they took naps. Even though they were different species, they didn't care what anyone else thought and just enjoyed each other's company. However, as they grew older, they started to face judgment from other cats and dogs. They would hiss and bark at each other, telling Camilla and Jenny that they were weird and didn't belong together. Camilla and Jenny tried to ignore them, but it was hard. One day, they were playing together in the park when a group of dogs started to surround them, barking and growling. Camilla and Jenny were terrified and didn't know what to do. Just then, a man came and scooped them both up into his arms. He told them that they were special and that they should never listen to what anyone else says. They could be best friends forever, no matter what. Camilla and Jenny were so grateful to the man and they hugged each other tightly. From then on, they stuck together and never let anyone or anything come between them again. Robert was always different from the other tigers. He loved music and dreamed of becoming a famous musician one day. His dream seemed impossible, but he never gave up hope. One day, out of the blue, Robert's dream came true. He was discovered by a music producer who was looking for new talent. Robert was signed to a record label and released his first album. The album was a huge success, and Robert quickly became a household name. He went on to release several more albums, all of which were met with critical acclaim. Today, Robert is one of the most successful musical artists in the world. He has sold millions of albums and has won numerous awards. 
his dream of becoming a famous musician came true. And it all started with a little tiger called Robert who never gave up on his dreams. There are many weird and wonderful things in the world, and one of the most odd and interesting is the subject of collecting rocks. For some, the idea of picking up a rock and taking it home with them may seem strange, but for those who enjoy collecting rocks, it can be a very rewarding hobby. There are many different types of rocks that can be collected, and each has its own unique properties. Some rocks are very valuable, while others are more common and less valuable. However, all rocks can be interesting, and even the most common rocks can have beautiful colors and patterns. Rocks can be collected in many different ways. Some people simply pick up rocks that they find interesting, while others go on rock hunting trips to specific locations where they know there are good rocks to be found. Some people even trade rocks with other collectors. Collecting rocks can be a fun and interesting hobby for people of all ages. It can be a great way to learn about the different types of rocks and to find and appreciate the beauty in all kinds of rocks, even the ones that are not valuable. Weird is defined as something that is strange or odd. There are many things in this world that can be considered weird, and there are even more things that could be considered weird if we only knew about them. In this essay, we will explore some of the weirdest things out there, from the slightly odd to the completely bizarre. One of the weirdest things out there is the fact that our dogs can continue to function for up to 10 minutes after they bark. This is because dogs are as cool as ice machines in the hallway of a hotel. One of the weirdest animals in the world is the axolotl, which is a type of salamander. The axolotl is able to regenerate its limbs and other body parts, meaning that it can effectively grow back any body part that is lost. This is an amazing ability that scientists are still trying to understand. There are many other weird and wonderful things out there in the world, and this is only a small selection. We hope that this has given you a taste of the weird and wonderful things that are out there, and that you will go out and explore them for yourself. In a world where the hustle and bustle of everyday life can be so overwhelming, it's important to find ways to relax and escape the stress. For me, one of the most dreamy and calming subjects is the night sky. There's something about the stars and the moon that just fills me with a sense of wonder and peace. Maybe it's the fact that they've been shining down on us for centuries, or maybe it's because they remind us of the infinite possibilities that exist beyond our everyday lives. Either way, looking up at the night sky is always a magical experience. Whether I'm lying in my backyard on a warm summer night, or taking a walk on a cool winter night, I always make sure to take a moment to look up at the stars. And every time I do, I can't help but feel grateful for the simple beauty of the world around us. The night sky is a reminder that there's so much more to life than the stresses of our everyday lives. It's a reminder that we are all connected to something much bigger and more powerful than we could ever imagine. So next time you're feeling overwhelmed, Take a moment to look up at the night sky and let the calmness of the universe wash over you. My favorite dreamy and calming subject is the ocean. 
I love the ocean because it is so vast and blue and it always seems to be teeming with life. I love the sound of the waves crashing against the shore and the smell of salt in the air. I can spend hours just staring at the ocean and daydreaming. The ocean is a place of great mystery and beauty. It is a place where we can go to escape the hustle and bustle of everyday life. When I am at the ocean, I feel like I am in another world. It is a place where I can relax and just be. There is something about the ocean that just makes me feel at peace. It is a place where I can go to forget about my troubles and just be in the moment. I am always in awe of the power and the majesty of the ocean. It is a place that I will always love. Kind love is the most beautiful thing in the world. It is the feeling of complete and utter acceptance understanding and forgiveness. It is the ability to see the beauty in someone, even when they are at their worst. It is the willingness to put someone else's happiness and well-being above your own. Kind love is not simply a feeling, it is a choice. It is a decision to see the good in someone, even when they are at their worst. It is a decision to put their happiness and well-being above your own. It is a decision to forgive, even when they have hurt you deeply. Kind love is the most powerful force in the world. It has the ability to change people, to transform lives. It is the light that guides us through the dark times. It is the hope that keeps us going when all seems lost. Kind love is the most important thing in the world. It is the only thing that truly matters. Creativity is often seen as a process of coming up with new and original ideas. However, creativity can also be seen as the ability to come up with new and funny ideas. This type of creativity is often referred to as comic or humorous creativity. Humor is an important part of our lives. It can make us laugh, smile, and feel good. It can also help us deal with difficult situations and make them seem more manageable. Humor is a form of communication that can help us connect with others. There are many different ways to be creative and funny. Some people are naturally funny and can come up with jokes and stories easily. Others have to work a bit harder at it. But, with a little effort, anyone can learn to be more creative and funny. One way to be more creative and funny is to come up with funny nicknames for people. This can be a great way to make people laugh and to bond with them. It can also be a way to show your creativity and to make people think about things in a different way. Another way to be more creative and funny is to come up with funny situations. This can be done by thinking about what would happen if something unusual happened. For example, what would happen if a person woke up one day and found that they had turned into a chicken? 
You can also be creative and funny by coming up with funny analogies. This is a way of explaining something by using a comparison that is usually not literal. For example, you could say that someone is as slow as a turtle or as sharp as a tack. There are many other ways to be creative and funny. The important thing is to have fun and to enjoy the process. Speaking of chickens, the chicken or the egg is a classic question that has been asked for centuries. There are a few different theories out there about which one came first. The most popular theory is that the egg came first, but there is also a theory that the chicken came first. The egg came first theory is based on the fact that chickens are born from eggs. This means that the first chicken must have come from an egg. There is also evidence to support this theory. For example, chicken eggs have a hard shell that protects the embryo inside. This is something that chicken eggs have in common with other bird eggs, but not with reptile eggs. This suggests that chickens evolved from a bird-like ancestor, not from a reptile. The chicken came first theory is based on the fact that chickens are more closely related to dinosaurs than they are to birds. This means that chickens could have evolved from a dinosaur-like ancestor. There is some evidence to support this theory. For example, chickens have a claw on their back that is similar to the claw that some dinosaurs had. So, which one came first? The answer is probably that we will never know for sure. Both theories have evidence to support them and it is impossible to know for sure which one is correct. The humble chicken has a long and storied history, dating back thousands of years to its wild ancestor, the red jungle fowl. These birds were first domesticated in Asia, and over time, various breeds were developed for different purposes. Some were used for meat, others for eggs, and still others for show. Today, chickens are widely considered to be one of the most common domesticated animals in the world. They are kept by people of all cultures and religions, and play an important role in many cuisines. In the United States alone, there are an estimated 9 billion chickens in existence. Despite their ubiquity, Chickens are still somewhat of a mystery to us. They are social creatures with complex behaviors and are known to form strong bonds with both their own kind and with humans. They are also incredibly hardy and can live in a wide range of climates and environments. The chicken is a fascinating animal and there is much still to learn about them. In this essay, we will explore the history and evolution of these amazing creatures, from their humble beginnings as wild jungle fowl to the ubiquitous domesticated birds we know today. Ted the chicken was a humble bird with a big dream. He wanted to go to a TED Talk conference and share his ideas with the world. Ted was born on a small farm in the middle of nowhere. The other animals on the farm would laugh at him and call him names because he was different. He didn't have the same feathers as them, and he was always walking around with his head held high. 
but Ted didn't care what the other animals thought of him. He knew he was special and he had something to say. One day, Ted saw a flyer for the TED Talk conference. He was so excited and he knew that this was his chance to share his ideas with the world. He asked the farmer if he could go, but the farmer just laughed and said, You're just a chicken, Ted. You can't go to a TED Talk conference. Ted was determined to prove the farmer wrong. He started reading books and watching videos about public speaking. He practiced his speech over and over again. And finally, the day came when he was ready to go to the TED Talk conference. He packed his bags and started to walk towards the conference. It was a long journey, but Ted didn't mind. He was focused on his goal. Along the way, he met other animals who were also going to the conference. They were all excited to hear Ted's speech. When he arrived at the conference, Ted was nervous but he went on stage and gave the best speech of his life. The audience loved him and he even won a prize. Ted was so happy that he had achieved his dream. Ted was even invited to London to give a talk. Ted was very excited to visit London and see all the sights. He had never been to a big city before and was eager to explore. He took in the sights and sounds of the city and even got to meet some famous chickens while he was there. Ted enjoyed his time in London, and it was a great experience for him. He was able to learn about different cultures and meet new people. He even got to try some new food. Ted actually decided to move to London after his visit. He rented an apartment in Battersea and started a new life. He loved the city and didn't want to leave. Ted is now a well-known chicken in London. He's known for being friendly and always up for a chat. He's also known for being a bit of a mischief maker. But that's all part of his charm. Ted is a happy chicken who loves his life in London. He's grateful for the opportunity he had to visit the city and is excited to see what the future holds for him. The future is an exciting place, full of possibilities and potential. It's a time when anything and everything is possible, and the unknown is full of potential. That's what makes not knowing what the future holds so exciting. It's the unknown that makes the future so thrilling. We don't know what's going to happen, so anything could happen. It's a time of potential and possibility. We can't predict the future, so we don't know what's in store for us. That's what makes it so exciting. The future is a time of change and growth. We can't predict how we'll change and grow, but we can be sure that we will.
It's a time when we'll learn new things and discover new things about ourselves. We'll make new friends and experiences that will shape who we become. The future is an exciting place because it's full of potential. We don't know what's going to happen, but we know anything is possible. It's a time of change and growth where we'll learn new things about ourselves and the world around us. For me, the future is a time to continue learning and growing. I am excited to see what new opportunities and experiences come my way. I want to continue to challenge myself and push my boundaries. I'm curious about the world and I want to learn as much as I can. The future is also a time for new beginnings. I'm looking forward to starting new projects and ventures. I'm excited to see what I can create and accomplish. I'm open to whatever the future may bring. Whatever the future holds, I am ready for it. I am excited to see what it has in store for me. There is nothing quite like the feeling of being creative. Whether it's writing a story, painting a picture, or composing a song, the act of creating something new is always exciting. And the best part is, there are no rules when it comes to being creative. You can let your imagination run wild and let your creativity flow freely. There are so many joys to being creative. One of the best parts is the satisfaction you feel when you finish something you're proud of. It's a great feeling to know that you created something that didn't exist before. And if you're really happy with your creation, you might even get to share it with others and see their reactions. Another great thing about being creative is that it can be a great way to relieve stress. When you're focused on being creative, you're not focused on whatever is stressing you out. You can forget about your problems for a little while and just enjoy the process of creating something new. And even if you don't end up finishing your project, the act of working on it can still be therapeutic. There are endless possibilities when you're being creative. You can explore different ideas, try new things, and make mistakes. It's all part of the creative process. And the more you create, the better you'll get at it. Who knows, you might even surprise yourself with what you're capable of. Taking risks and being brave enough to try new things is an important part of life. It can be scary to step out of your comfort zone and try something new, but it can also be incredibly rewarding. Being brave doesn't mean that you're never afraid. It just means that you don't let your fear hold you back from living your life to the fullest. When you take risks, you open yourself up to new experiences and new opportunities. You might find that you're good at something you never would have tried if you hadn't been brave enough to take the leap. Of course, it's important to be smart about the risks you take. You don't want to put yourself in danger or do something that could have serious consequences. 
but taking risks can be as simple as trying a new food or signing up for a dance class. In the end, being brave is all about living your life with no regrets. It's about doing things that make you happy and following your dreams. So don't be afraid to take a few risks. Evelyn had always been a brave and creative person, but it was her ability to face challenges and overcome them that made her the world's bravest and most creative person. She was born into a family of artists, so creativity was in her blood. From a young age, she was always pushing the boundaries and trying new things. This didn't always sit well with her parents, who preferred the more traditional art forms, but they soon realized that their daughter had a special talent. As Evelyn grew older, she continued to explore her creativity, and she quickly developed a reputation for being a fearless innovator. She wasn't afraid to take risks, and her bold approach to life inspired others to do the same. Evelyn's creativity wasn't just limited to her art. She was also an incredible athlete, and she was always pushing herself to be the best. She was the first woman to compete in the men's division of the Ironman Triathlon, and she went on to win the race. You know, I'm not a poet. I'm just a guy who likes to rhyme. I don't write for money. I do it for fun time. And sometimes I think, why can't I be funny all the time? Then I remember. I'm not a comedian, I'm a poet. Did you know that? Poetry is a genre of literature that often uses figurative language to communicate emotions and ideas. Poets often use rhyme and meter to create musical or incantatory effects. Poetry has a long history, dating back to ancient oral traditions. Poetry is often divided into categories, such as love poetry, war poetry, and nature poetry. There are many famous poets, such as William Shakespeare, Robert Frost, and Maya Angelou. Poetry can be enjoyed by everyone, whether it is read aloud or silently. Poetry often explores the human experience with all of its joys and sorrows. Not poems celebrate the happiness of being in love, while poems about loss and grief explore the pain of losing a loved one. War poems can describe the horror of battle or the feelings of those who are left behind. Nature poems can capture the beauty of the natural world or the feelings of awe and wonder that it inspires. Poetry can be a way to express emotions that are difficult to put into words. It can be a way to explore the world and our place in it. It can be a way to connect with others and to find meaning in our lives. What makes a poem successful? There is no one answer to this question. A poem can be successful if it makes the reader feel something, or if it makes them think about the world in a new way. 
A poem can be successful if it is beautiful or if it is funny. A poem can be successful if it is able to touch the heart or if it is able to make the mind race. There is no one right way to write a poem and no one right way to enjoy one. The best way to enjoy poetry is to explore it and to find the poems that speak to you.